What's up, Algebros and Algegals? Mr. Zwaynes here, coming at you with part two of homework number one. Okay, for this homework, you were to skip problem 5-13, but we're going to run through a couple problems just to give you a refresher on it. Let me zoom in on my camera, make sure we're good to go. Okay, first problem. Jill was studying a strange bacterium. When she first looks at the bacteria, there are 1,000 cells in her sample. The next day, there are 2,000 cells. Intrigued, she has come back the next day to find there were 4,000 cells. Okay, there is an e-tool available that I will um, link in this video. I'll, I'll link it down in the description down below for you. Uh, and again, there is the homework help resource for you. Uh, should the graph of this situation be linear or curved? Well, let's just make a table. On day zero, there were 1,000 bacteria cells. On day one, the next day, there were 2,000. On day three, sorry, on day two, there were 4,000. I can see that this is a multiplicative relationship, not an additive relationship, where I multiply the previous value by 2. So therefore, it should be curved. Okay, create a table and graph for this situation uh, and interpret the days that have passed as she began the study, sample outputs, the number of bacteria. Okay, so you can use uh, Desmos for this and then just make a sketch. I'm going to use one of my graph sticky notes to make sense of this. Okay, so my x is, uh, sorry, my x is the day and y is bacteria. Okay, so on day zero, these are going to be 1,000. So at day zero, there was 1,000. Day two, sorry, day one, 2,000. Day three, 4,000. If we keep up this pattern, day three, there's going to be uh, 8,000, and we're going to see that continue to grow. Okay, let's think about this. Is this going to be continuous or discrete? Um, probably continuous. Let's think about that. Bacteria is reproducing uh, constantly, and so it if I look at the, the values in between, between days, there's probably going to be an increased number of bacteria uh, between those days. It's, it isn't going to be just like the rabbit example where just the rabbits drop once a month. Okay? So we've done the first problem, moving on to the next problem. Uh, we do need to use our exponent rules to solve these. This exponent rule remembers the quotient rule, whatever the numerator is. Uh, we subtract that exponent from the denominator, so it would look like this when we have the same basis. 5 to the 723rd minus 721 power. 723 minus 721 is second power, so our answer is 25. B, same thing, uh, 3 to the 51st power. Okay, this one, I see that it is to the 0 power. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So everything inside is equivalent to one when we put it to the zero power. Okay, last up, um, we've got scientific notation. So let's break this down. I've got four times 10 to the third squared and 10 uh, over, or 10 to the negative second that I'm dividing by. So that's gonna be uh, four times 10 to the third times four times 10 to the third over 10 to the negative 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Uh, when I rewrite this, 4 times 4 is 16 times 10 to the 6th. Remember, we add our exponents when we're multiplying them with each other. Same thing down here, divide by 10 to the negative 4th. I see I'm dividing by negative uh, 4 for my exponent, so final answer is going to be 16 times 10 to the 10th. Um, and then it didn't say to leave it in scientific notation, so we're just going to leave it just like that. If you wanted to do it scientific notation, it'd be 1.6 times 10 um, to the 11th. Okay, last problem. Uh, we need to check to see if they solved this correctly. Big surprise, they did not. What they forgot to do was correctly uh, multiply those binomials. Remember, whenever I have x, time, or x plus 4, 
squared, that's equivalent to x plus 4 times x plus 4. Oh, I ran out of room, okay? Remember, we can use the area model to do this multiplication. x plus 4 times x plus 4. x times x, x squared. x times 4, 4x. x times 4, 4x. And uh, 4 times 4, 16. Rewritten as x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay, let's rewrite this and solve it correctly. So that would be x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 2x minus 5 equals. We run into the same thing over here. Use the Pause the video right now and use the area model to multiply x, time, x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, you should have gotten x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now let's solve. First thing I'm going to do is combine my like terms. I have 8x and negative 2x, so that is 6x. I also have 16 minus 5, which is 11. And then I still have my x squared on each side. which whenever I have the same value on each side, I can subtract it out. Refresher from our algebra tiles earlier the, this year. Now I have 6x plus 11 equals negative 2x plus 1. I'm going to add 2x, add 2x. And then I'm going to uh, subtract 11, subtract 11, and I get 8 x equals negative 10, divide by 8, divide by 8, x equals negative 2.25. Okay, final problem, evaluate the expression, 1 fourth k to the fifth minus 3 times k to the third plus k squared minus k for k uh, equals 2. Okay, 1 fourth times 2 to the fifth minus 3 times 2 to the third plus 2 squared minus 2. Remember, whenever we input a value for the variable, we use parentheses to help us keep track of our order of operations. Okay, Gemma, uh, grouping symbols, parentheses uh, are a grouping symbol, nothing inside of that. Next, I'm going to move to exponents. 2 to the fifth power, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. 32 divided by 4. So 1 fourth of 32 is 8. Minus 2 to the third. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4 minus 2. Now working from left to right. 8 minus 24 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 4 is negative uh, 12. Negative 12 minus 2 is negative 14. And we have our answer. Okay, that took eight and a half minutes and I did an extra problem. Uh, hopefully you were able to get all of that. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or ask me in class. As always, I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day. Zwayne's out.